today on Ask This Old House. Do you have an old kitchen like this and would love a dishwasher? I'll show you how to make room for one. And I'll show you how to connect them. Well, I can already imagine you cutting vegetables and putting dishes in at the same time. That's right, it's gonna be great. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks. Thanks so much. I'll share with you the benefits and uses of mulch. A lot of times, and this is what I have a problem with, is that they use dyes in it, and so dyes have chemicals in it, which I like to stay away from. And we turn this French rolling pin on a lathe, and we'll show you how to build it. Hey, Richard. Hey, how are you? All right, how's that mailbag looking? Mailbag is full, full, full. Good, because we got a new show, we need new projects. A uh, crazy one here. This is a kitchen that's, you know, it looks like it's 70s kitchen. Homeowner wants to have a dishwasher. She's never had one. Mm. But if you look, there's hardly a spot to even put in a dishwasher. It means, it really suggests that it's more of a carpentry issue than a plumbing issue. A little bit of plumbing, a little right. bit of carpentry. Well, you know what? Who's that? <laughs> you guys know a guy, right? Yeah. We, know, we know a guy. So I'm thinking about uh, taking your expertise down to this site and okay. seeing if you can cut those cabinets better than I could. Yeah, we could do that. Good. Hi, guys. Hey, how are you, Megan? Thanks how you for doing? coming. Thanks for having nice us. To see you. Nice to finally meet you. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> so this is the kitchen you sent the picture of? This is the kitchen, yeah. It was custom built in the 1950s by the original owner. And it's great, but the one thing that it is missing is a dishwasher, which we would really love to have. That's pretty common these days. I have a lot of friends moving into older homes, and a lot of them don't have a dishwasher, yeah. so it's a good it's a good yeah. project. I was always the dishwasher in my house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, dishwasher, the standard dimension is 24 inches. And so if we look at this sink base, you know, we look here, it's going to lock this cabinet, that's going to be in trouble. They make a narrow one, like an 18, but it's still, it's still going to give us trouble right here. Yeah. So, what are you going to do, Mr. Carpenter? Well, we can kind of do some nips and tucks. Um, I could, the easiest thing for me to do is probably just get rid of everything here, yeah. put the 24 inch unit in. I could put a new style here, and I could give her a small little door, maybe for some baking trays. A lot of, do you need have a lot of extra baking trays you want to store? I mean, I'm not a big baker. <laughs> I guess it would be great to be able to keep the drawers for the utensils would, if you need, possible. Right. You do need the storage. All right, so let's think about this. Now, what if we fought a little harder for this base cabinet? If you could cut this, mm -hmm. could we scooch it over yeah. by enough to make except the 24 inch? And now, maybe infill with some other material. You're not going to get this for Micah, I'm sure. No, no. This laminate, but um, maybe infill something on the top just to... Yeah, we have the room to grow, so okay. why not steal that space? Um, I could make a, you know, a cut there, and there's some butcher block right over there that we could replicate. I could put the butcher block down here, okay. or I could replicate this over here, and I could put the butcher block a little closer to the sink. I would. That you makes like sense that? to me. You know, I actually have a piece of butcher block that came off of a This All House project oh, yeah. that we could repurpose. Wouldn't that be cool? That's very cool. <laughs> All right. All right, how do we get started? Well, I'm going to drop this off. There's a few things down here to clean up, and then we'll pull some measurements. Let's get some saws. All right. So we want to get a really precise cut. We want to have a nice clean line for a butcher block to butt up against. So to do that, I'm going to use a framing square because we want to come back square. I'm going to bring this straight edge up here, and I'm actually going to screw that down. Then I'm going to use a laminate scoring knife to do a relief there. Then I'm going to take this away. I'll use a circular saw to cut close to that line. I don't want to cut right on it. I could be an eighth, a quarter inch away from there. All right, should be free. Roll it up. Bring that out and cut it. All right, now we can work on the cabinets. As you can see, these were built in place. They weren't bought at a box store or anything like that. So we need to take our time and try and get it out in one piece. All right, so you start rolling back that way. I'm gonna take this big bar and I'm gonna try and get under these two by sixes that they have. I'm gonna try and pop it up. 
All right, so we got a couple loose ends to clean up. I'm gonna take these little nubs off, take this old slide off, and then I'm gonna come in with the belt sander. I'm gonna fine tune that line to make that perfectly straight, and you'll be almost ready for a dishwasher. Sounds great. All right. All right, be careful. The homeowner's watching, don't wanna scratch the floor. All right, here's your new dishwasher. You excited? Really excited. Three connections we have to make. One is electricity, one is hot water into it, and the other is a drain has to leave out to the sewer. So now there's also some standard dimensions, right? We know already that it's 24 inches wide is the standard and 24 deep is the standard. Well, no problem there. But when it comes to the height, I want to show you this. Now with this dugout of the floor right here, we're looking to get 34 and a half. And if I go from that floor, look at this. I'm about a half an inch below where I want to be. I want it to be right up at this point so it's easy to secure the cabinet. So I'm going to have Nathan build up this floor by about a half an inch, and that'll make it easier to secure the dishwasher to the underside of the countertop, okay? okay. Now, there's some standard dimensions I talked about. There's also these connections. There's your electricity. Now, what is that? How did this happen? So the prior <laughs> owner, uh wired that in, figuring the future owners would want a dishwasher. They knew you were not going to be denied to get a dishwasher, right? <laughs> All right, so that's perfect. So we'll run that wire to the front to the dishwasher. Here's our hot water supply right here. I think what I'm going to have you do today is to actually use these solderless connections. This is now a copper version. So we'll have you put that there with a the supply. And that gives a nice shutoff valve on the dishwasher too. And then on the drain, there's going to be a hose like this that sends discharge. We have to get it into this plumbing system. So if you had a disposer, you probably will get a disposer someday, right? Maybe someday. <laughs> but for now, we're looking for a place where we can have use something like this, which is a branch tailpiece that has a place for the discharge to go right here. But look at this. There's not enough room for us to fit it right here. So what I can do, actually, is break these two connections, break this connection right here, and I can cut this pipe right here, and that'll make both of these drop down low enough so that we can replace both of them. That leaves you a perfect port for the drain. Okay. All right, you ready to be a plumber? I'm ready. All right. So we're just getting the patina off of it. Yeah, that's, that's gotta, that might be 70 year old pipe. <laughs> push it down, push it down, push it down. So it's putting a little tension and it makes a beautiful clean cut. Watch this. Nice. Look at that. Beautiful. Good. Makes a nice cut. Alright, so here's this one. Takes a few cuts and that's off. Alright, nice. Alright, here's the cabinet that we cleaned up. As you can see, it's going to be a little bit shy on the plywood side, but it's touching over here. So we're going to use some cedar shims to level it out. How's that look? Oh, it looks great, you guys. Good. So you can give me a hand. All right, so I'll get underneath. So Megan, just hand me that drain hose. Yep. All right, so the drain connection. Sticks onto here, and it's a stainless steel breeze clamp connection. Okay, so the last connection is actually a standard garden hose faucet with a gasket. And it has a thread. I just want to make sure I don't cross the thread. These clips are important. They're going to secure the dishwasher to the underside of the countertop. All right, are you ready there, Nathan? All right, let's slide it in. It in. Slide it to the rear. Right. Nice. Well, Megan, you actually have a new dishwasher. Who said it couldn't get done? It looks so good. Thank you guys so much. It looks actually way better than I ever imagined. Don't, don't Me you think? too. Yeah, it looks like it's always been it, here. It looks great. It really, it really came out great. But a little bit of homework. Uh, a couple touch-ups on the paint down here. Okay. And then also we're going to want to put some finish on this butcher block, maybe a nice food grade, food safe uh, oil, and okay. uh, that'll finish it off. Okay, you no some problem. Of that? We do. We have okay. some of that, yeah. Good. Well, I can already imagine you cutting vegetables and putting dishes in at the same time. That's right. It's going to be great. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks guys. Yeah. Oh, Thanks so much. Hey, Jen. Hey, Kevin. 
So we're talking mulch. Do you love mulch as much as I do? I do love mulch. I love mulch. Day. It, there are countless ways that it can be used. There's so many different kinds, but the functional purposes are one of the huge things. So for to keep in soil moisture, it really helps keep the moisture in the soil once the water penetrates through. Yep. That's number one. Number two, uh, soil temperature. It helps regulate the temperature. In the summer, it keeps the roots cooler. In the winter, it keeps them more insulated. Gotcha. Okay. So, keeps the weeds down yep, for sure. And definitely. I love the look, right? I mean, all of a sudden your garden goes, man, eh, it's a little scraggly. And right. then it's just like, boom. It that looks is so the good. final icing on the cake. It just makes everything look clean. Yeah. So there's so many different applications and ways and types. And so there's organic and there's non-organic. There's so This is interesting. Like I think of, of mulch as sort of like the bark chopped up or whatever, but you've actually got stone here and little pebbles. Yeah. Right. There's so many different ways to do it. Like out west, they might use like lava rock or, you know, something that yeah. you don't have to keep on reapplying. So the pros of using pebbles like this or this are you're not going to have to reapply it. They're going to stay in place. Uh, a con could be it heats up too much and mm -hmm. it, it really like burns the roots. But okay. you see it in a lot of industrial places. It's easy. It's yeah. pretty much maintenance free. It's a look. Hay is not something I think of mulch either, although there's a ton of it in my area, you know, used because we got horses and stuff like this. This is good in the garden? Oh, this is great in the garden when you want to close it down at the end of the year, especially in uh, perennial gardens and vegetable gardens. You top dress it. It helps with the soil, keeping all the nutrients in so they don't get wash, washed out. So Okay, so function here, not so much aesthetic. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. And then this is what I think most people think of typically with mulches, right? And these are sort of the, the bark mulch, the wood mulches and such. These three come in the same kind of family. You might see them more frequently in your home center. A lot of times, and this is what I have a problem with, is that they use dyes in it. And so dyes have chemicals in it, but they do it to have the, the color last, right. which I like to stay away from. So that's interesting. So this is basically just shredded wood or bark, right? Yes. It's these long things. And then they treat it with the color to give it yeah, a different Yeah, and it's, it's a color preservative. And so it, it locks in the color and the color lasts longer. But then that's also going to leach into your soil. You see this a lot and it's clearly not a natural color. It's not. And for me, my style, I. I tend to stay away from that. Uh, this is pine bark, and yeah. these are nice chunky pieces, and the water can penetrate through this just perfectly, and sometimes it comes down to look, like what kind of look do you want for your garden beds? And then this stuff here? This is more of a shredded bark mulch, and I this is like my go-to stuff. Yeah. You know, it helps with the decomposition, it helps invite earthworms, and then the, the, these organic nutrients go into the soil and then helps with the whole cycle. Okay, so options, um, boundless, endless. Let's talk about application. Can we use your favorite to yes. apply? Yes. In terms of technique for when you're putting this down. So Okay, so... It drives me crazy. You go around to a lot of places and you see these mulch volcanoes around the tree. And people think, I think people think it's going to protect the base of the tree. Yeah. So here, I'm going to show you an example because people tend to just go like this, up around the base, right? Yep. And then what this is going to do, it's going to, call, it's going to invite moisture and rot. And so what you really want to do is Move it away so you can expose the flare Which is of the root. Right there. Yeah, so you just want a little, little dusting over the top and then go around it. Right. And you can make like a saucer, to, you know, especially when you're doing new plantings, you make like a little saucer so the water is caught in the, in the middle. Mm. So no mulch volcanoes. In terms of spreading it throughout the rest of the garden, how thick? How much do you want to build it up? That's typically? a very good question. Yeah, I do. It depends from perennials to shrubs. Perennials do one to two inches. Shrubs two to three inches. And time of year? I mean, I do mine in the spring to kick them off, make the gardens look great after we tune them up. Mm -hmm. when, like, is that the best time? Spring is a great time unless you have a lot of perennials. A lot of people like to let their perennials come up first so you don't completely bury them. Yeah. So it depends what type of garden bed you have. But, but for trees and shrubs, absolutely spring. Cool. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think we're on the same page with mulch. We yeah. love it. And no actually, volcanoes. Way more to know about it than I thought. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Kevin. How are you? All right. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Now, the Build It Project, what you thinking? Well, I was actually thinking about doing a nice project on the lathe again. The lathe. Your new favorite pastime. Okay. <laughs> I'm up for that. Well, what, did, what do you have in mind? Uh, how about a rolling pin? It's all, <laughs> I don't know. All kinds of rolling pins out there, and I thought we would do a rolling pin out of this uh, piece of mahogany right here. 
spin it and make it a French rolling pin. And in other words, it'd just be a straight and then a slight tapered on the end, so there would be like one dollar. No handles spinning or anything like that. Right, right. Normally, I would say, Tom, I have no interest, but it turns out my wife is a baker, and yeah. she actually asked me for a rolling pin for Christmas, so I got her one. I didn't realize how many rolling pins there were. Yeah, we could have made her one. Too late. Yeah. <laughs> so rather than just spin this piece of mahogany, I thought I would like to put a little pattern in the middle of it, yeah, a little nice. detail. Yeah. So I glued up some veneer right here last night, and this is a piece of maple and a piece of mahogany, mm -hmm. and I put the three of them together. And let's put an X pattern right in the middle and see what happens when we turn it. All right, I'm in your hands. All right, let's start it over the saw. And the first thing I did, find the center of the blank of wood, and I made one complete cut. Now I cut a short piece of the inlay, the length of the diagonal, on, with an angle on each end. lay that in place, and I put the three pieces together. I take a second piece of inlay and I put it on top, marking the thickness of the inlay. Then I cut that section out with the saw. I'm using blue tape to hold all the pieces together so I can cut them. So the tape is going to hold all of the pieces in the correct orientation, so we can glue that up. Yep. Bring that together. All right, so now we get some clamps. Clamp that up. That's what I like, the glue's coming out of that joint there, nice. Would be nice to turn this on the lathe right now, but we actually have to wait 24 hours for this glue to dry. That's why I glued up a second piece. Of course you did. Last night, so we can turn <laughs> it right now. Have a look at that one right there. That is sweet. All right, let's get that on the lathe, and we can turn it. First thing we need to do is find the centers on each end, put a hole in. All right, so now we're ready to mount our piece into the lathe. We have a live center on this end, mm -hmm. and this is going to grab into the end of the piece so it'll spin. So I'm going to drop this one right in here, line it up with that hole. And I'll tighten this down using my center points that we've made on the ends. Okay, now, do a little bit of tension. I want to have about a uh, quarter of an inch clearance between the material and the tool rest. Okay, now we're ready to go. We've got our face shield. I have my glasses so I can see. Aprons to keep the sawdust off of us and the shavings. My sleeves are long, but they're buttoned down. All right, so we're going to run a lathe probably around 1,200 revolutions a minute is pretty good. Now the roughing gouge is going to give it a round. We're going to make it round. We're going to take our time. So we'll grab it, pick up slightly, and just walk it over. Now you see how I'm sliding with my body? You can go like that. Pushing everything with my body, I'm becoming one. If I move this hand, I move this hand, I'm going to get lined. You don't want to do that. Raise it up, raise it up. That's right, keep coming, keep coming. All right, I 
feels pretty good. Let's see how it looks. <laughs> it looks awesome. Yeah, that's pretty good detail, huh? It's beautiful. All right, now we're ready to basically put a couple of tapered ends on it to make the handles. And I want to make this section of the roller consistent so it'll be flat. So I think I'm going to make it about 11 and a half. Let's do 12 inches. So I take it from the center, six inches. And I go here, 12. That's party tool right there. That just allows us to bring it down and get our right depth. And I'll start my calipers in that. Bring it in. Now we're ready to do the taper. And then for that, I'm going to use a skew chisel. Now these are uh, more of an advanced tool because this will really kick back at you but it will give you a nice finish and remove a lot of material quickly. All chisels work off of the bevel. I bring it down, hit the bevel, keep going. At the same time, I'm raising the handle and I'm pitching it slightly because I don't want this tip to catch. If this catches, that's gonna kick right back at me. So I wanna bring it up, find the bevel, bring my handle up, keep coming down. Now I have it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a finishing polish on here. It's food safe. Put a little dab on with a paper towel. And you're just going to rub it around. And always use a paper towel on a lathe. You never want to use cloth because if it gets caught, the paper towel will break away. A cloth won't. Pull you right in and then you get trouble, huh? Yeah, then you get trouble. Look at that mahogany, dark, rich color come out. That's yeah, nice. All right, so the finish has dried a little bit. It's probably been about 15 minutes. So with a clean paper towel, I want you to hold your hand on it, around it, and then back and forth, put some pressure on it so it actually heats up. Yep, definitely some friction. Yep. Starting to give a little bit of a sheen to it. Yeah, you're it. starting to get your sheen now. A little polish coming through. There you go. Tommy, that is the nicest looking rolling pin I have ever seen. That thing is awesome. Pretty nice, huh? The little detail sets it right off. That's beautiful. Nice job. And that's a little rolling pin for your lovely wife. Seriously? That's right. Kathleen's going to be psyched. Thank you. That's <laughs> My awesome. Pleasure. Thanks for your help. You got it. All right. Well, we have got more projects and more answers to your questions coming up next time. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Tom Silva. For Ask This Old House. She's got Next time on Ask This Old House. I noticed that this beam under our deck has fallen. It seems like a pretty dangerous thing. So I was hoping you could help me fix it up. This deck joist fell down. I'll explain why and how to fix it. Everybody wants the washing machine up in the living space, but it can flood the entire house if a washing machine hose bursts. I'll show you how you can prevent it. And we'll discuss some of the changes we're seeing with electric vehicle chargers.